Okay. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. <laughs> we are so glad you have come to join us during this week of festivities. All those pagans out there and those Christians who celebrate Halloween, shame upon you. <laughs> hey, can I have some candy? <laughs> yes, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Great Scott, that's a lot of candy. Coming to you from 125 Carver in Waco, Texas, it's the Riverside Weekly. We hope your time with us today is thought-provoking, spiritually challenging, and a life-changing experience. Our discussions are fun, real, and at times very uncomfortable. We highly encourage all of our guests and listeners to like and subscribe, and please ring the bell. Now, here are your hosts, Pastor Cello and Pastor Mia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I got a joke, I got a joke. Run for it, Marty! Oh. They found us! We found the candy! The Libyans! I don't know how they found us, but they found us. <laughs> I need 1.21 gigawatts. <laughs> um, I have a joke. Ready? Okay. Oh, All man, right. I thought this mug was open for real. No, 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 no. You can't have props and then not be real. Um, yes, yeah. you can. Sorry. <laughs> now, don't you wish you were the Hulk? Ah! <laughs> 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 well, so good. So good. Thanks. All right, what are we talking about? Okay, wait, I got a joke. I got a joke. I got a joke. I got a joke. I'm going to get in this thing. Go ahead. You're not going to. I, I sealed it. Double sealed. With the stickiness. Snow match for my teeth. <laughs> don't. <laughs> okay, I have a joke. Ready? Yeah, yeah, hurry. Okay, I'm trying. Oh my god, that's a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Great, Scott! That's a lot of chocolate. <sighs> <laughs> I can't say the joke because you're crumbling. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway. Brought to you by chocolate and candy. <laughs> anyway, I'm let, listening. let me say my joke first. Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? No, I meant banana. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my joke. Okay, ready? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Orange, you glad I didn't say banana? <laughs> One candy. Sorry. It's, it's just a costume. It brings out the corny in me, I guess. Who knows? Thanks, thanks. I'll be here all week. Okay. Anyway, welcome to the podcast, everybody. It's it Wednesday. Meh, meh, meh. Yay. Yay. Aren't you glad she didn't wear an orange suit? Nah, <laughs> I wouldn't. I, I was going to, but this one was just readily available, so I did it anyway. Anyway. I'm going to snack on some candy while you're jibber-jabbering. Thanks for joining us for the week of the hollow. Um, all you pagans out there who are about to celebrate with candy and um, tricks. And, uh, you know, don't forget the good old-fashioned treats here. Um all of us do that, or some, quite few, do that to reach, quote, the um, the public or whatever. We, Johnny, just, we do it so we can give candy away. I know why we do it. I'm just saying that everyone else probably does it, and they're like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. So, oh, actually, that's, really, that's, that's being posted a lot right now. What? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Just um, that churches shouldn't be celebrating um, Halloween during uh, having Harvest Fest or... Any kind of costume. Um, any kind? Any type uh -huh. of costume. Now, anything having to do with Halloween, celebrating Halloween, because it's a pagan holiday. It's evil. Um, uh, man, you name it. Okay. Um, just, um, I actually had somebody give me a call um, a couple weeks ago about, and? That, about that topic. And uh, about doing that topic or asking no, whether they, they were should? Asking me. What do we think about it? Uh, actually, he asked me what I thought about it. Okay, okay. So he let's said, let's elaborate here for the people since um, All Hallows' Eve is coming this Sunday. And we're actually um, 
our it's service. Monday, actually, actually, it's Monday. It is Monday, but on Sunday, and this has been the norm for Riverside, we do our Harvest Festival on that Sunday because we have an apartment complex across the street. And that's not really why we do it, because we would have done it even if we hadn't been across the street, well, I think. Well, we do it on Sunday because um, who wants to come to church Saturday and Sunday? No Christians, of course. <laughs> but Halloween fell on, it's falling on Monday. Monday. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't have to come to church. Well, most typically most churches do outreaches on Friday or Saturday. Mm -hmm. Before Halloween. Before Halloween. Uh -huh. My mouth is thick. I know. That's why I never eat the caramel. Man, it's so Cause good. Because then you're like a cat eating peanut butter. So good. And that's a dog. Oh, I'm sorry. You knew what I meant. Um, Clearly you knew. Yeah. I'm not even a pet guy. Okay. Um, uh -huh. So most churches will do a outreach slash festival slash harvest fest. Harvest fest. Some sort of outreach uh -huh. for um, Halloween. And they'll do it usually Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh -huh. um, before the the... Halloween with okay. the third, before October 31st. Okay. Genuinely. Genuinely. Generally. You, in the it, is general. the caramel sticking yeah. together? The not caramel? genuinely, but generally. 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 And not oh, the, the generally. generally. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we're on top of it today. Sorry, sorry. Um, so, generally, um, churches will do it before Halloween. Okay. Um, but we... And I say we because it's more my team, mm -hmm. or our team, mm -hmm. um, felt like um, in order to really maximize reaching people, um, re maximize reaching the community, mm -hmm. is to do it on a Sunday Okay. Um, during our church service hours. Mm -hmm. So we do it Sunday morning, afternoon. Mm -hmm. And so, and the reason behind that is because, and this my is hair. where, this is where the jab starts coming a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm ready. That um, we discussed in one of our team team lead meetings. Let's go. One of our team sorry, lead meetings. Um, wow, that's long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, round one. Go. Oh, too much candy. Excuse me. Um, they decided or discussed. They had a discussion that when you look at typical outreaches for harvest festivals, um, dramas, those types of things. Um, during Easter, I mean during Easter, during Halloween. Um, typically, you don't really get a lot of um, non-church people. Right. You tend to get church people. Okay. So what what will happen is you'll have, let's just say you have four churches, and each church will be doing an event throughout the hol Halloween weekend. Mm -hmm. And so what typically happens is that all the Christians, all the believers, will go and support and attend these church... Har these har functions. These, harvest, these church harvest festival functions. Mm -hmm. So really what happens is you have a faith-based outreach that's reaching faith-based people. Okay. Typically. Mm -hmm. Well, our team basically decided that in order for us to not reach faith-based people or people that are not plugged into a church or people that are not currently going to a church or attending a church, um, to have it on a Sunday because all the church people are at church. And so the people that, will t that we typically reach in the last uh, four and a half years – has been individuals that are not currently in church, people that are not a, a connected to church. And so because it's a Sunday morning afternoon, so it's around, around lunch mm -hmm. um, till about two, um, we typically have an influx of people that um, are not connected. And so it's been more effective for us. And so instead of having an event, setting up, doing the event, tearing down, and then cleaning up, and then coming to church on Sunday, we just do it all on one day which is a Sunday. So, and we do it, typically do it all on the outside. There's yeah. a few things that we, happen. Yeah, in the sometimes inside. we do stuff inside, but typically it's on the outside. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, we kind of, we kind of utilize both mm -hmm. inside and outside mm -hmm. of the building, but um, I think it's just, um, I think it's interesting that a lot of times that's what happens is that churches support church. I'm not saying it's wrong, but when you're trying to reach um, a community, a community um, that doesn't come to that church, doesn't come to church but we just, our team just thought outside the box a little bit. And that, so I just I support them and I love I love what we do, um, but I think I think just 
uh, just with the with posts that I've seen on social media, the, the conversation that I was actually somebody actually called me and asked me what my viewpoint on it is if it was um, considered witchcraft. <laughs> Literally was the question: Is it witchcraft to um, let your kids? Is it practicing witchcraft um, to let your kids go and knock on doors and get candy, um, participate in harvest festivals, um, those types of things? Um, what I shared with them. Um, is um, we don't celebrate the Easter Bunny, and we don't celebrate the egg of the Easter Bunny, and um, we don't believe in Easter Bunny and Easter eggs. Um, and so, uh, you know, we believe in Christmas, but uh, maybe not necessarily Santa Claus, right? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily elves, right? So I think it's just interesting how we can de- we decide what we want to celebrate mm-hmm. as a church, and that's yes. what I shared with them. Um, and so I just told them, they, you know, they said, well, this, do you feel like it's um, it's evil? Do you feel like it's demonic? Do you feel like it's witchcraft? And so I just proceeded to ask questions. And I said, I think it's interesting that the church and believers, or the believers who are the church, actually, I think it's interesting how uh, we define evil based off of what We interpret evil to be. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that there's no such thing as evil spirits. I'm not saying there's no such thing as witchcraft. I'm not saying that there's no such thing as demonic possession. And like I I believe in all that type of things. I believe those things exist. But I think it's interesting how, as believers, we pick and choose what we want to celebrate, when we want to celebrate it, and how we want to celebrate it. Um, And I'm not saying that we're celebrating Halloween or Mm -hmm. harvest, but it's, it's in our culture. Right. And so, well, you're not supposed to be a part of the culture. I'm, I'm not saying that we are, but I'm just saying like when when you look at um, what we do as a church culture, as a culture of Christianity, we we're all lopsided, man. We're really all over the place. And so what I uh, continue to tell tell them was that if you read in the scriptures, I believe it's in Samuel uh, I have to look it up exactly. But um, it talks about actually, I think it's in sorry Psalms. I don't have any pockets. <laughs> Um, it says that, um, I'm like the Laffy Taffy. There's a joke on the back side. That's what I should have had. I know. Anyway, so, um, it says that disobedience to God, disobedience to his word is as witchcraft. Okay. So my question is, are we more concerned with letting our kids knock on doors than being obedient? That's all I'm saying is like, we get so hung up on, well, we're celebrating the witchcraft and you're celebrating evil. You're celebrating these things. You're opening doors. Like, I'm not saying that there's a possibility that we do that, but I think that we get off focus. The scripture says that disobedience as is, is as in witchcraft. In other words, it's the same being disobedient is, is basically practicing witchcraft. So my question is, is are you more, are we more concerned as a church of getting on somebody or judging someone or trying to correct someone who is uh, allowing their kids to knock on doors, who's participating in a church trunk or treat, who's... Um, a school trunk or treat. I saw school that. School trunk or treat. Like, I mean, like, are we celebrating it? I don't know. Are we celebrating Easter? Well, that's that's when the Lord is resurrected. Like, yeah, but I get the, the Lord, Lord is resurrected. Bring he didn't bring eggs and he didn't he bring didn't no bunny. He didn't about eggs either. Right? Like, there wasn't a basket, right? Yeah. Like, and so I think I think sometimes we, we over spiritualize things that we want to Mm -hmm, mm over-spiritualize and we negate the things that are true to God's word. And so I think we're so focused on what everybody else is doing or practicing, if you will, celebrating. Um, I think we get so hung up on that, that we forget who we are in Christ. It's Mm -hmm. like having a conversation um, with a young lady and she's like, well, I was taught that you can't just let anybody pray for you because they might have an evil spirit or some kind of demonic spirit on them um, that will get on you. And I started laughing. I was like, well, then if the spirit can get on you and the evil spirit can get on you, then what good is the blood of Jesus? <laughs> what is it? What good is being born again? What good is being a child of God? We, we literally elevate evil things above who we are in Christ, in Christ yeah, who yeah. we are as a believer. I agree. I agree. You know, And so I think it's kind of the same thing with Halloween. I think that I think that we're um, elevating Halloween to up here and that being being in Christ and being a believer has no merit. Yeah. Yeah. In that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's so, well, you have to be a mature believer and you have to be spirit filled and you have to have all these these 
all these check boxes, right? And so you, I mean, you, you can have all these things. Well, and somebody's, somebody's disagreeing with me, right. but I'm just saying like, we have all these different scriptures that'll pop in and they'll be like, you know, well, you know, um, the, the, sons of, the sons of Sceva, they got, the, they were casting out and jumped on them and overtook them. And then you know who they were. And I'm like, yeah, but they weren't born again either. Yeah. You know, so I mean, when it says, the word tells us when we get born again that Christ resides in us. And so I think there's, you know, you can get into some theological and doctrinal discussion about that. But I think just generally, I think we as believers, we get so focused on what we think evil is or what we think witchcraft is. And um, we don't really look and see what the word says, mm -hmm. what evil is. Yeah. Right. What, what, um, it, it, is what it, demonic is. Is it going door to door and getting candy? Hmm. If that's the case, we should probably not go to the store and buy candy. I don't know. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, and so not to, not to, not to say that I disagree with him. I'm, I'm asking a question. Like, what are we, what's more important to you? You know, it's like I was sharing with the guy a couple of weeks ago, you know, it's like, I believe abortion is wrong. And I've said it before, but I also think standing on the side of the road, holding up a, a big old picture of an aborted fetus is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it does anything for the church. It actually hurts the church. Right. So, uh, yeah, I went on a rant. Sorry. I was like, let me just stick this piece of candy in my mouth. No, you don't want to do that. Why? Because. I'm going to tell you like Macy. Why? Why, Grandpa? Why, Papa? Why? Because it's mine. It's mine. Why? Oh. I have to get another one. Go ahead. <laughs> no, because I don't even eat the caramel. You well, already I know, know that. this. I know that, but you know. So, cookies are good. All right. Anyway, that was my rant. I don't know. I feel like I used all our time up. I mean, you probably did, but this candy's real good. Just saying. I'm just saying, you know. But. I, Be safe. Check your candy. <laughs> Go to all the cool spots. Mm -hmm. And swing by. And you know what I think is funny? Go ahead. Tell me. Sorry. No, Let's, no, no, no. Come on, come on. I think it's funny that we spend 365 days out of the year telling people, watch out for strangers. And then we take our kids to strangers' houses to get candy. <laughs> Classic. To me, that's Classic. more. that makes more sense of an argument as a parent yeah. and as a believer than you're celebrating something evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, like, it's kind of an oxymoron. Don't take candy from strangers. But on this day... We're going to go to knock, every stranger's house. house. And knock on the door and ask for candy. candy. <laughs> Hilarious. And there you have it, guys. And that's the way we see it. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. I, I saw the costumes. I know that um, Halloween is coming up. And we are doing fun things, stop it, doing fun things to reach out to our community. And most people say this is a way to do that. But again, going back to what he said, usually these events, Christians... Um, frown upon. No, Christians frown upon, but Christians only attend these events. Oh, church events. Yeah, church events. Not usually the neighborhood people. I, you might get a handful. But yeah. not that's predominantly not the way they go. That's what I was going to say. They go to the community events. It's sprinkles of people, yeah. you know. And because they don't want to have anything to do with church. Mm -hmm. So they don't go to the church. Events. I don't want your candy. I won't do it. <laughs> you know. No, but really, that's, that's really what happens. Yeah. Like exactly what you said. Yeah. Because it's a safe environment. Yeah. Well, we're safe. I no, mean, I'm, saying, I'm saying like church people go to church harvest festivals because it's a safe environment. Oh, because it's not stranger danger? Yeah. But this is what I think is interesting. Tell me. These are the same people, the same believers, who send their kids to public schools all year. For eight hours a day. Eight hours a day. With people you don't even know what people they're doing in their know. homes. And on their homes and their lives. Well, we're celebrating evil. Like, Don't get me started, bro, because I'm just like, we make decisions that don't make any sense to me a lot of times. And I'm just like, how, how over spiritual and religious can you be before you sound completely ignorant? to what you believe. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not saying you're ignorant. I'm just saying, let's think about some things, guys. Let's use the, the mind that God gave us, the spirit that's within us, the word that he's provided, and make sound, logical decisions so we don't sound crazy. 
<laughs> so says Doc Brown. Okay, thanks. Anyway, well, I don't know. That was great. I just wanted to come out here and tell a joke and, enough. you done. know, no. be light. I can't handle it no more. We're, we're done. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening to the Riverside Weekly. Download the Riverside Waco app to stay connected and follow us on all social media sites at the Riverside Waco. This podcast is made possible by the givers of Riverside Community Church. Production and engineer provided by Capital G and RTV in Waco, Texas. 